Pre-algebra, Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for the weekend of Friday, March 2nd. I gotta tell you guys, I was... I gotta tell you guys, I was a little bit disappointed, uh, especially with 7th period, um, some of the making up of numbers. You guys just like refusing to try or think. I don't get that. The word determine, the word determine does not mean take a guess. It never means that. Okay, there's no context of that word, no form of that word that means take a guess. You need to figure out, find out how much something is. And I know Kendra nailed that answer in uh, in eighth period. I was very proud of her for doing so. All right, so you need to determine uh, the surface area of something or the volume of something. It doesn't mean take a guess. And after I told several of you not to do that, you still did it anyway. And I really don't understand that. I just don't believe I'm getting your best effort, and that's what's frustrating me. This project is a test grade. It's a test that you can do in class with the teacher and with help of friends, so I don't get why I'm not getting your best effort. Maybe you don't think it's important. Okay, well, your report card will disagree with you. All right, that being said, we are going to look at uh, really quick problems, say like this, where we have a rectangular prism. I'm going to clone him. And then I'm going to connect my vertices. Okay. And I am going to tell you that this is 12 centimeters. This will be 8 centimeters. And the height will be uh, 10 centimeters. All right. I'll do the volume of my prism first. This is a rectangular prism. We're going to do its volume first. Now, I don't like the formula length times width times height. It is correct. I will let you use it. But remember, area of the base times the height is so much more practical. It allows you to do so much, so many more. It works for cylinders. It works for triangular prisms, anything like any type of prism. All right. Now, the base, in this case, might be this rectangle here on the bottom. I know it doesn't look like a rectangle. But that's only because of the way it's drawn. You're looking at an angle. So the base is that rectangle, and that rectangle is 12 meters by 8 meters, right? That's the capital B. That's where capital B comes from. It's the base. Now, how tall is the prism itself? Well, the prism is another 10 centimeters tall. Oh, did I put meters in there? Excuse me. Let me rewrite that. Oh, sorry about that. Let me rewrite that because I put meters and it's really centimeters. So I should have 12 centimeters times 8 centimeters, and then the height is 10 centimeters. Okay? All right, nothing wrong with making a mistake. Nothing like taking a moment and correcting your work. 8 times 12, I believe, is going to be 96. And right now, I'm going to do it this way, 96 centimeters squared. And then I'm going to multiply by 10 centimeters. All right? So I'll get 960 centimeters cubed. That is the volume of that prism. All right? How would you get the surface area? Well, I would strongly recommend the first thing I would do is I would draw the flat network. So I know I need a, a 12 by 8 centimeter rectangle. Okay, and then I'm going to have a 12 by 10, right? So a 12 centimeters by 10. And then I'm going to have another 12 by 8, right? 12 centimeters, 8 centimeters. And then I'm going to have another 12 by 10. They are not all four congruent, okay? Now, I'm going to do something wrong here. I know I need an 8 by 10. Well, I think that's got to come off of this side, right? And so that'll be 8 centimeters. And we already know that this side is 10. And now I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to put another 8 by 10 there, 8 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Stop and think why that's incorrect. Okay, Gary Frederick could tell you that if I folded that up to make a box, my box would have a hole in the top. Okay, my flaps need to be on opposite sides. Most people 
like to do them somewhat symmetrical. So they would draw their other one just on the other side. And it helps them get it right. Now I need the area of all those rectangles. Oh, let me write my area in red here so that way it stands out from my length measurements. All right, this is going to be 96 centimeters squared. This is also 96 centimeters squared. This is 80 centimeters squared. This is 80 centimeters squared. This will be 120 centimeters squared. And then the bottom one here is 120. Notice I didn't waste my time calculating it six different times. I knew I had three pairs that were the same. So now I could take this approach and go 120 and 120 and 80 and another 80 and then a 96 and a 96. It's going to be a 12, carry the 1. Looks like I got 10 there and I got 20 and I have 30 and the 9 more is 9. I'll carry the 3 and then it will be 592. All right, so we are going to have a total of surface area of 592 centimeters squared. Notice at no time in the, sun, in the surface area problem did I multiply more than two centimeters together. I went centimeters times centimeters for each of these areas. I never said centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Never did that. That's why it's to the second power. If you look at the top one, I did multiply centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. There's three of them, so it's to the third power. Okay, all right, one more to throw at you here. Let's see how you would do with a problem like this. Let's see if I can draw it okay. How could you figure out the volume of a composite shape like this? I'll tell you the first thing I would do is I would break it up into two shapes. I would figure out the bottom, the volume of the bottom shape, which should be this guy here, right? I pretend he's a rectangular prism. He really is. Okay, so I'll figure out the volume of him, and then I would figure out uh, the volume of the unshaded part. Now, it looks like I might have left a little bit of information out. I think we need to know this piece right here. And so I'll tell you that that is four meters there. All right, so for this box right here, it looks like my base, because remember the volume of a prism is area of the base times the height. Well, that's 15 meters times four meters. And the height of that prism is only six meters because I'm only going up to there. Right? I'm not going the full length on this side. If I was, it would be 12, but I'm not. Okay, so it looks like 15 times 4 is 60, and 6 times 6 is 36, and 60 times 6 would then be 360. And I've got meters, meters, and meters, so it's meters Q. But I'm not done. That is only the yellow portion, the yellow region. All right, now I've got to do this white part. Let me see if I have enough information to do the white part. Well, do I know this piece here? Yeah, I think that would be 5, right? It's marked right there. So the length is 5. Do I know this piece here? Yeah, I think I do. That's 4, right? All right, so right now I have uh, 5 meters times 4 meters. Do I know this piece? I hope you're not saying that it's 12. It's not. 12 is the whole side. Now let's think about it. Over here we know from here to here is 6 meters, right? Well, if this is 6, this is 6, but the whole thing is 12, the remaining piece has to be 6, doesn't it? 12 minus 6 equals 6. So this piece here is 6 meters. So I have a 5 meter by 4 meter by 6 meters, right? Okay, and I know that 5 times 4 is 20, and 6 times 20 is 120. 
meters, 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 meters cubed. So this part is 120 meters cubed. To get the entire volume of this shape, I know that I'm going to have to take 120 meters cubed plus 360 meters cubed, and that'll equal 480, 480 meters cubed. And there we go. Pretty simple stuff. All right, so we're going to be looking at some of this soon. Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Good night, everybody.